quite a few. It, among the older uh, patients, maybe about 50 to 60 percent. Okay, 50 to 60, that is 5 out or 6 out of 10. 10. Among the seniors, the younger Most ones, of, of course. Uh, Most of them, right. yeah. Okay. And do GDM patients also come, gestation diabetes, pregnant women? Uh, not so much. Okay. Not so much. They don't have much of dental problems during pregnancy. They do have dental problems during pregnancy, but there is a fear of uh, having treatment done during diabetes. I mean, during pregnancy. Oh. The, uh, of course, we do treat them during the second trimester, uh -huh. but it is necessary actually to get the plaque control done during your pregnancy because there is something called pregnancy gingivitis where the inflammatory response to plaque is much more because of the hormonal changes. And uh, if plaque control is done, then things are much better for the patient. But there is a fear among patients to get... Actually, it's very really, uh, strange because usually just before uh, any kind of surgery, major surgery, right. people would, uh, the doctor would ask you to get your tendon Checkup, checkup done, done. Completely, right? You know, get rid of all the infections. Right. So, does that really happen with uh, pregnant women also? No. Unfortunately, not. Uh, even, of course, now we do root canals sometimes in pregnant patients if they are okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, taking X-rays with a lead apron. But even then, they are a bit apprehensive. And as far as possible, we avoid procedures during pregnancy. Second trimester is considered safe. And, uh, but usually the GDM comes in the second trimester, so uh, that's, that's, that's the time when... They don't really come up with, uh, unless they have pain, nobody comes for a dental checkup or uh, any but treatment. But is there a between pregnancy and uh, dental problems? Just gingivitis. Gingivitis, pregnancy gingivitis is a very common condition where the response to plaque is exaggerated. So there is gingivitis Does in pregnancy. Does that mean that uh, a GDM pregnant lady would be in additional, uh, no, kind of additional, uh, facing additional problems because of uh, it's, it's It's possible. It's possible because uh, diabetes does cause exaggerated response to everything in any case. But Again, since gingivitis and periodontitis, they are both silent diseases. Unless there is a problem, if a patient has bleeding while brushing, mm -hmm. then they sometimes get worried about it and come. Otherwise, you rarely have patients walking in during pregnancy for a routine checkup or for plaque no, control. I'm not talking about the routine checkup, but right. you know, pregnancy leading to uh, you know, oral problems, and then combined with that, you have a gene. No, it's it's not that pregnancy. Other than uh, other than the uh, gingivitis, yes. usually there aren't too many other problems related to pregnancy per se. Okay. And uh, what's the treatment for gingivitis during pregnancy? Scaling, just oral hygiene, okay. cleaning of removal of all the plaque because when there's plaque, the gingivitis is present. Yes. After that, if the ginger, uh, if the plaque is not controlled that again hardens, it becomes tartar or calculus, which then does not go with brushing. So the thing is aggravated. So if you do a cleaning, a scaling and root planing, then the problem is solved. And uh, if the GDM is also present, will that change your course of treatment? Not really. Okay, your treatment. Gingivitis is, uh, gingiva is the gums, okay? That is the pink portion of the teeth, uh, of the uh, gums that you see that around your teeth. The teeth, the teeth are embedded in. Okay, so that is your gingiva and gingivitis. Itis is inflammation. So gingivitis is inflammation of the gums, which could be uh, swelling, redness. If your gums look red, angry red, that's not healthy. The gums have to be pale pink in color. Usually, if you have inflammation, the gums are red. They are uh, soft to touch. Very often the, uh, the papillae, that is the pinpoints the, around the gums, where your gums go like this, that should be sharp. That's blunted, rounded. It so should not be blunted. It should not be blunted. So those are all indications of gingivitis. And very often there's bleeding on probing or touching when they brush. Some patients get up in the morning and find there's blood in their mouth. So all that 
means that there is inflammation. Okay. So just a scaling and complete cleaning of the teeth will reduce and reverse this condition. Whereas if that is not taken care of at that stage, mm -hmm. then it progresses to periodontitis. Periodontitis is where the supporting tissues are involved. You have the tooth which is within the bone and in, within the bone it is held by ligaments. Okay. So once the gingiva is inflamed, it tends to separate from the teeth. And you have the plaque then collecting within the gingiva. The so plaque is usually food material which It's food collected. with bacteria. There's a lot of bacteria that are present in the mouth. So and that erodes both the teeth as well as the gum. Not the teeth. It is the gum and the bone. The teeth, the teeth are affected by caries. That is another thing. This is just the supporting tissues. Okay. When we talk about gingivitis and periodontitis, we are talking about the supporting tissues. Okay. So periodontitis is caused where the plaque then proceeds to lodge between the gums and the teeth. It goes in there. You have a pocket forming there. Okay. And then again, once the pocket forms, usually the patient is not able to clean properly. So the problem is worsened then. And these are all usually silent diseases. Unless you have an abscess, there's no pain. So gingivitis will progress to periodontitis and the patient is usually quite unaware of it. Unless the tooth starts shaking then, which happens when periodontitis occurs, there's the plaque going down and the inflammatory response will cause resorption of the bone. So there's bone loss as well. And a perfectly healthy tooth will start shaking because the level of the bone goes down. So that's... Is that the reason why Dr. Diabetics often find that they lose very healthy teeth? Yes, yes. That is the reason because, as I said, unless there is an abscess, there is no pain. So if this progresses, you will have, as it is, the uh, inflammatory response of diabetics is uh, <coughs> much higher than a non-diabetic or a well-controlled diabetic. So when you have this exaggerated response, mm -hmm. you have more inflammation, more uh, attachment loss and more bone loss than the normal patient. So the healthy bone is lost and then the tooth shakes and falls out. Okay, when you talk about inflammation, right. In gingivitis, right. does that mean that it does not get septic and there is no pus formation, nothing? It can lead to pus formation. It can lead to pus formation but that is a later stage. That's when you start getting the pain? Pain, right. Sometimes even then there may be no pain, unless there's a lot of pus collection. Sometimes you just have a little pus oozing out. So as it oozes out, the pressure is not there anymore. So there's no pain. But whether there is an acute abscess forming in one spot, mm -hmm. then that tends to be painful. When does that abscess come in? Uh, is it usually when it's too late for treatment? Sometimes they do recover. But again, the bone loss, if it is a vertical bone loss, usually it's possible that we can even put in a graft and there will be some uh, recovery there, some bone formation there. Mm -hmm. But if it is a horizontal bone loss, then usually the graft does not work. So once the bone is lost, what you've lost is it. Graft? graft is a material that could be a allograft or something that is added to the bone, where there is bone loss. If there is bone loss between the tooth and uh, suppose there is a V-shaped defect, for example, okay. and you put in bone graft over there, that usually gets uh, integrated into the bone. So you have recovery over there. You have healing of that area. Okay. So that helps in certain conditions. Okay. Dr. Sudhakar, can you also tell us what kind of materials are available today, the new technologies which have evolved for uh, replacement of teeth? Okay. See, we can have uh, dental implants which are the latest for replacing teeth. That is uh, again contraindicated in an uncontrolled diabetic. But in a person with good glycemic control, there is absolutely no contraindication to having uh, implants. Actually, that was my next question. And what are the dangers of implants for diabetes? So, can you also tell us about that? See, if there is a, per a person who is uh, blood sugar levels are fluctuating a lot, mm -hmm. then he may not be an ideal candidate for an implant. Because sometimes there is uh, the uh, implant bone interface is sometimes not good enough in diabetics. So in that case, the implant might fail. So 
okay so then that person is not an ideal candidate for an implant see if there is an infection that they have to be treated with antibiotics the uh, depends on what the infection is if usually if there is periodontitis for example definitely root planing and scaling does help in that case because glycemic control and periodontitis seem to have a very reciprocal relationship because where there is periodontitis the glycemic index does not come under control it is very difficult for the patient to control their blood sugar levels if there is periodontitis and vice versa because when the blood sugar levels are high periodontitis is again oh, okay. progressing oh, okay you know we have spoken to so many dentists but we never came across these issues you know. Peri periodontitis dentists can actually cause uh, you know i mean it can actually Make the resistance, insulin resistance higher. There is a uh, cytokine called TNF alpha, which is a tumor necrosing factor, mm -hmm. which is a prerequisite for diabetes. So, if uh, and in periodontitis you have TNF alpha, and if with increased TNF alpha you will not have your blood sugar levels coming under control, and if your blood sugar level is not coming under control, then again this thing will, pro will progress further. So, so you have to strike a balance, do the scaling root planing and it has been noticed that with the scaling and root planing done, as the periodontitis improves, so does the blood sugar level.